Hello everyone, this is Matt bringing you another edition of Old Gods and New Pagans. This is episode 4, coming out of the broom closet. So, let's go ahead and dive right in. Coming out of the broom closet, what does this mean? It's a common term used by pagans and people of non-Abrahamic faiths to come out to the public, their friends, family, co-workers, etc., about their new spirituality and their new belief systems. Um, just some debate over the term, but it's the most commonly known, so that's what we're going with today. Uh, so what does this mean? Uh, coming out of the broom closet is essentially telling your friends and family about your new spiritual path. Uh, it's often done when leaving Christianity or really any other Abrahamic faiths. Uh, this can be a shock to those around you, so we're going to go into like why you should or shouldn't do it and how it will affect others, including yourself. Um, how should you, best practices, who do you tell, what do you say, and kind of next steps and moving on. Um, so let's kind of go in. So why would you come out to your friends and family? What do you gain from this? And, you know, what's going on? Uh, there's a couple of reasons why people do this. Uh, one is really just as a shock factor to family and friends when they're leaving, um, like the Abrahamic faiths, like, like Christianity, when they're leaving their church. They're kind of burnt, a lot of... Um, Let's see uh, a lot of religious trauma going on there, so they you know kind of want to shock their friends and family. Um, I'll tell you, this really only works to alienate yourself from your closest community of your family and friends. Um, I don't recommend this approach, and if that's the only reason why you want to come out of the broom closet, I personally don't recommend it um, because one, it kind of alienates yourself, like I said, and it pushes everyone else away. And you lose that community and you lose those family connections and those friendships along the way. And that really doesn't have any benefits unless you just absolutely want to burn some bridges. If this is your only reason to come out, I, I wouldn't do it. Um, another reason is just to be honest with yourself and the people around you. Uh, this is a really good reason. And you should explain or... Um, you know, use this as a moment to explain what paganism is to those around you and kind of, you know, the path you're going on. Um, another reason would be to try to bring others into your practice. This is um, kind of a weird one because pagans don't typically recruit. Um, not saying that paganism can't recruit other people to the spirituality, but that's really not what paganism's about. It's kind of finding your own path, not pulling people kicking and screaming into ours. Um, but we kind of welcome others with open arms. Um, like with paganism, the doors are always open, so we welcome anyone in uh, to explore the path, no matter where they come from, even those Abrahamic fates. We do not push anyone else away unless there are some like problematic um, things going on with that. Um, Typically, white supremacy. A lot of this is xenophobia and the gatekeeping that happens in some of the branches of paganism. Uh, we kind of shun some of that stuff and we kind of push it away. Uh, we shouldn't completely ostracize those people because we want to keep those lines of communication open. Which is, you know, going back to the earlier point about you know coming out to shock family and friends. It really isn't helpful because you still want to keep those lines of dialogue open. Don't burn your bridges because, you know, if you can open their eyes to what paganism is and, and what it means for you, you can build some close relationships with these people. You know, we, we can agree to disagree on some of this stuff, guys. We can, you know, have these people in our lives that are not pagan, but we can keep those friendly dialogues open. Uh, Someone I work with, he's absolutely Christian, and I'm absolutely pagan. But we have some really good intellectual discussions about some of this stuff, and it's really cool because we're both interested in each other's spirituality. Um, even though we know we're not going to convert the other, it's still a really nice communication that goes on between us. Um, kind of deep diving into the lore, the history, the mythology of both paths. It's, it's a lot of fun. And those connections are still strong, and those connections are still valuable. So, even though we don't really recruit or bring people into our path, you know, we, we can you know, still open those dialogues, be honest with the people around us, and kind of build those relationships. Uh, so, out of the three main reasons for coming out of the broom closet, to shock your friends and family, to recruit, or to be honest with yourself, I would recommend that, you know, if you want to bring... I would recommend that if you want to talk 
two people and come out of the broom closet, it's really just to be honest with yourself and to be honest with the people around you. Um, to shock friends and to recruit, it's it, it doesn't work. Um, people are in their paths, so the only thing we could really do is just show how we live and give them an example for our lives, and if that's what they want, then they will come to paganism on their own. Recruiting is a Christian thing, and uh, I think we should kind of distance ourselves from that sort of thing. So another you know, question is, like, how do you come out to your friends and family about it? Um, first, you know, make sure you know enough to answer the most basic questions they will ask because you know they're going to ask those questions. Um, you should approach this very calmly. Don't start an argument. Don't get all emotional and angry and like start throwing things around like your religion sucks, you know, things like that. You, you, sh- you should distance yourself from those things. You know, try to stay calm. Come into this with an open mind and open heart. And, you know, create those lines of dialogue and discuss these things civilly with the person you're coming out to. You want to, you know, establish that level of trust, that level of openness. You know, whatever emotions you bring to the table will influence the person you're talking to. So if you come with anger, they're going to reply with anger. If you come with fear, they're going to kind of push that off too, and they'll, they'll notice that. So don't be argumentative. Don't be hostile. Otherwise, the person you're talking to will mirror those emotions and and it's not productive at all Um, you should explain that this is what makes you happy and at peace spiritually I can't stress this enough when you're open these dialogues and you talk to somebody about your new pagan path you know you should let them know that this is what makes you happy and it puts you at peace and you're not afraid you're not scared you're not um, you don't have all these negative emotions anymore because like for me in my personal path like, I had so many negative emotions. I had anger, rage. I was a really, really um, violent person in my mind. Um, when I started going down this pagan path, I started gaining so much peace. Like, it, it's it's unreal the difference in my own personal, like, um, mentality, you know, coming down this path. Because I was pushed into Christianity for so long and all these rules and, and everything like that that I never agreed with, but I just followed it because culturally, living in the South, that's just what you did. But when I was honest with myself about my pagan spirituality and my, you know, I'm a practicing animist, so I'm more about the nature, less about the gods, uh, myself personally. So when I started spending more time in nature and really focusing on that, like all those negative emotions kind of went out the door. So explain that to your friends and family. If that's your path, if that's, you know, how you feel, that that's a good thing to bring up, that it's less negativity in your mind, your heart, and it really pushes you into a more open, you know, happier place. Um, I don't recommend starting with any criticisms of your previous religion, Christianity, Judaism, Islam, uh, any other religions like don't start with criticisms like your religion sucks and you know all these things in your book that don't add up and you know leave that stuff alone you know that's for a debate later but when you're coming out to your friends and family I would recommend staying away from those sorts of things it just creates debates creates arguments and it's not productive it will do nothing but widen the divide between you and the other people. You know, just learn from my experience. Um, when I first started going down this pagan path, I was posting all the edgy memes on the internet, on social media, and getting in arguments with people in my friends list about, you know, certain things. And, like, when they would post something about their religion, I would, like, make their make some uh, witty comments and... It, it never did good. I lost a lot of Facebook friends over that. And, uh, you know, it is what it is. Um, but, you know, thinking back, you know, I kind of regret breaking those connections because those are some good people and people I really cared about. And they're kind of out of my life now. But, you know, it is what it is. So try to stay away from the criticisms of your previous religion and just, you know, again, approach it calmly and... Talk about positive things, about your happiness, your peace, etc. And try to explain to the people what really draws you to the path. Um, another thing about 
thing to consider of why and why not and how to come out to your friends and family, you know, consider that there may be some backlash. Um, if you're a minor, if you're a child, um, how will your parents react? Um, I, I don't condone lying to your parents or keeping things from them, but just consider how they're going to react. Are you going to be grounded? Are you going to be forced into church? You know, things like that. You know, consider those things um, in depth. Consider the future ramifications of what this is going to cause in your family situation. Um, as a child or living at home, you can't just leave. Uh, so consider how that will, how your parents will react to this. Um, don't try to, you know, set up a little altar in secret and try to hide it from your parents because they'll find it. They will. I mean, that's that's a given. Uh, your parents have access to your room. They can't hide anything from them. Um, so just consider that when you come out. And again, be open, be respectful to these people, be respectful to your parents, uh, and stay calm. Uh, consider how your spouse may react, uh, because there can be some division in there and, you know, arguments about how you raise your children and things like that. So again, stay calm, approach this with an open mind, and kind of go through that. Um, then you start wondering, you know, like, who do you tell first? Um, I believe in, like, you have circles of people around you. So you have the people that are, like, directly around you. That's going to be your spouse, your children. If you're living at home, your parents, roommates, whatever. Um, those are the people that, you know, are around you. Then you have, you know, a wider group of friends, coworkers, and then you have the public at large. You know, you have, like, three rings of people and relationships around you. Um with who do you tell first, you know, prioritize those who need to know and kind of start in that closest circle. Like, okay, so your spouse, your parents, your roommates, your girlfriend, boyfriend, you know, the people living there with you, like, do they need to know? You're like, are you going to church anymore? So obviously you should, you know, let that person know that, hey, this is my path. I'm not doing this other things anymore. Um, I do recommend that even if your spouse does stay with the Abrahamic, you know, they're Christian, whatever, you know, you can still go to church with them, you know, be with them. You don't have to believe what they believe. You don't have to go through all the motions. You can be respectful and still offer support to your spouse. Um, me being pagan for several years now, I still will go to the church um, just to show my wife support. You know, that's just who I am. And it's okay. Like, you won't burn the church down just by stepping in the doors. And you don't have to agree with what they agree with. But you can show support to your family and friends that you actually love. Um, so, again, start with those closest to you, your spouse, your children, your parents. You know, if they need to know, let them know. Some people simply just don't need to know. Your coworkers, like um, business clients, your extended family, the cousin that you haven't talked to in 20 years. Like, do you really need to ring them up and tell them, hey, I'm a pagan now? It's kind of silly. Um, it's like, do you really need to go into these details about your spirituality and you know, with paganism, that's really kind of a, um, a personal thing. Like, it's not something that you wear. Well, I say it's not something you wear on the outside, but my shirt kind of shows it right now. Um, <laughs> but really, like, do these people at large need to know the intricate details of your spirituality? Probably not. Um, you know, again kind of go with that need to know. These are your coworkers, your clients, your extended family. See if you have a coworker that's constantly inviting you out to their church or to this or that or to other religious things, maybe you can kind of pull them aside and say, hey, you know, thank you for the invitation, but I just want you to know I do not follow that religion. I am on a different path. And, you know, again, as I said before, stay calm, stay respectful, and just kind of move on. Just say, hey, you know, I appreciate the invitation, but I'm respectfully declining. You know, that's it's a polite way to do this and to, yeah, just keep those relationships open. So if you have those coworkers that have a different path, you know, you can talk to them and, you know, keep those lines of communication open so that maybe they eventually come down your path. You know, it's, it's something like that. You can kind of help them understand. And that's one thing that um, 
I want to do with this podcast is kind of open that level of dialogue and hmm, maybe open up people's eyes to paganism becoming more mainstream so people would understand it more and they're not just like devil worshippers over there that you know they they're people with lives and you know our moral compass isn't broken you know we have real strong morals in the pagan community and we want to show that you know and like kind of go, moving on uh you know when you think about you know who you tell how you tell them what you know do they need to know you know you think about what do you tell them? You know, again, what they need to know. They need to know what paganism is. It's a nature-based belief system in its core. It's not a monotheist, monotheistic religion like Christianity, Islam, Judaism, or any of the other monotheistic religions. You know, we believe in multiple gods and goddesses or sometimes none at all. Um, there are animist, animist pagans out there that don't really believe specifically in the gods and goddesses and that they're just aspects of either the natural world or human nature. So let people know that, you know, specifically what you believe, and let them know that these are very old belief systems that go beyond um, some of the newer religions, like Christianity and Islam. Um, So let them know that these, you know, are old belief systems and that you're getting back to your roots. You know, that's kind of what sets us apart from, you know, a lot of the major religions. Um... When, you know, talking about paganism, it's kind of fun to let them know that pagan originates from the Latin paganus, which was just used at the end of the Roman Empire to name those who practiced a religion other than Christianity, Judaism, etc. Um, It really just meant country dweller. Um, It was likely a name given because Christianity really spread more quickly in cities where people were kind of like following the new fad, the new fashion in the city. Um... And then those people in the country were less likely to convert or, or later to convert. So they just kind of called them the period equivalent of like hillbilly or redneck or, you know, those country folks over there. Um, so that's kind of where the, the term pagan come from. If you, It's a little fun fact that I like to, you know, tell people that pagan was really just, it was almost the level of a derogatory term at the time. But we've embraced it and we, we continue on it because it's the, Best thing that kind of explains us, you know, we're the people out in the country, we're the the nature worshippers, you know. It's also important to tell people what paganism is not. Paganism is not devil worship. Most pagans don't believe in the devil or even believe in the concept of an all-evil being. So that's kind of important to let them know that, like, you know, just because we're pagan, you know, we don't really follow that devil thing because that's a, you know, a strictly Christian ideal is the devil. Um, <clears throat> paganism isn't about human sacrifice. Uh, important to let them know that many religions, even including the Abrahamic, included human sacrifice at one time. Not any longer. Paganism doesn't uh, doesn't uh, practice that, and neither does Judaism. I mean, a common story in the Christian and Bible or the Old Testament is uh, Abraham willingly going to sacrifice his son. So. You know, if he was going to do that, you got to consider that human sacrifice was part of that religion at one time too. Um, so when people, you know, you know, want to ask, you know, does pagans, you know, practice human sacrifice? The answer is no, not anymore. Like n- none of the religions do, but most of them did at some point. And it's important to kind of consider that. It's in also what paganism is not is it's not about like hedonism. The pursuit of pleasure and self-indulgence over everything else. Uh, most pagans take a conservative approach to life in order to not upset any balances. Um, we don't have any of these strict moral rules of sexuality that some of the religions do. Um, so that may be why we get that idea of hedonism. Um, that we're not you know, strictly um, confined by these rules of uh, abstinence or um, celibacy and things like that, and so that may be why we we get that image. But most pagans are very conservative in their pr- approach of life. So now that you've come out of the broom closet, you know you've kind of figured out who you need to tell, what you're going to tell them, um, how you're going to tell them this again calmly. You know, what should you do after that? Like, once you've told them, then what happens? Or, you know, kind of going on. Um, You should just continue on with your life. 
Uh, some people that you tell will take it well, others will not. There's nothing you can do about that. How they react is on them, not on you. As long as you approached it calmly, you didn't create anger, division with your words and actions, you know, anything that they reciprocate on their end is on them. Uh, try not to burn any bridges. Allow, you know, once you've provided that information, you know, step back, allow your family and friends to process and understand what you've told them. Uh, next step is to learn and to grow. Continue on your path. Learn your path. You know, study up your mythology if you're following one of the um, different pantheons. You know, learn into um, the gods and goddesses of your chosen path and, and really dive deep, not just as not just to them as people or as gods, but really focus on what they represented. So you have, you know, the, the god Odin, and he represents uh, wisdom as one of his um, representations. You know, really think about what wisdom means and, you know, the pursuit of knowledge that Odin embodied. You know, take that upon yourself. Pursue the knowledge. Learn as much as you can about this stuff. And learn as much as you can about the natural world beyond the pagan path you've chose. It's so powerful to learn. Like, like if you see a plant you don't understand, they've got tons of apps out there. Just learn what that plant does. You know, all the different alkaloids and the toxins or medicines that are in that plant. It's, it's kind of fun to start, like, diving into this stuff and understanding the natural world and how everything is so interconnected and how balances are kept in nature. It's so interesting. And I recommend you kind of learn in, you know, lean into that and learn and grow more. Another big thing, you know, what do you do is you make connections. Uh, you continue to connect with your friends and family, even though they are not on your pagan path. Uh, don't allow yourself to be bullied or disrespected, though. And do not bully and disrespect others, people that are not on the path. Uh, it's very important. You know, we're trying to make these connections. We're trying to build public awareness and understanding of paganism. If you're always combative, it does nothing but harm the community at large. And I recommend finding a good community. There are a number of pagan communities out there that will help you grow and find resources. Uh, there are some problematic communities out there, uh, but there are also some really great ones. Um, if you have trouble finding a community that um, makes you feel included and not um, problematic, definitely reach out to me on social media, on, you know, email, through the website, contact forms, whatever. Reach out to me and I will help you find a uh, community. Uh, something we're kind of doing in the background is uh, we're building a nonprofit organization called the Pagan Project. And we're, and one of the big goals of that is the public awareness aspect of paganism, but also making those connections and helping people connect with each other in different communities, finding the community that fits them. We have one major community that allows everyone in, but if you want a more niche uh, community, specifically to Celtic paganism, Slavic paganism, Norse paganism, etc., you know, we can help you find those. Or indigenous um, pagan paths. We can help you find those different communities that will help you out. Uh, so to recap, when deciding to tell people about your pagan path or coming out of the broom closet, remember a few things. Um, why you want to tell them, you know, is just be honest with yourself. You know, why I'm telling you to be honest with yourself of why you actually want to tell people. If it's just a shock and all campaign, I recommend not trying it. Um, it's going to do nothing but burn bridges, and in the long run, it's going to hurt you more than it will help you. Think about who you should tell, you know, only those that actually need to know, like your close friends and close family. Not everyone needs to know. Uh, consider what you tell them, you know, what they need to know, specifically just to ease their minds and so that they can gain some understanding that they can take and process later. And, you know, what do you do next? You continue on your path, you learn and grow, and you stay connected with the people that matter to you, no matter what their beliefs are. It's all about making connections. Even if we don't believe the exact same things, you know, it's okay. We, we can still make those connections and we can still, like, support and help each other. So just remember, stay on the path, explore all the possibilities out there, and, yeah, thanks for listening. Uh, new episode will come out soon about specifically explaining your beliefs to the Christians. 
So it'll kind of help um, the next steps on this. So if you want to wait to come out of the broom closet until you hear that, that come upcoming episode, um, do so. Uh, look at the pre- you know listen to the previous episodes about what paganism is, what animism is, and kind of a little bit of uh, Norse paganism in there too. Um, yeah, thanks for listening. Keep it real, guys. <laughs>